Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where today we are looking at things. We're digging into Lake House Observability. Now, this is one of the big announcements from the DWI Summit. They had a whole raft of Unity catalog improvements, one of which was casually thrown in. Oh, by the way, there's a dashboard that'll tell you everything you want to know about people using any of your Databricks workspaces. And a sea of XDBAs went, ooh, yeah, yes, please. But then, where is it? Can you use it? How do you find it? Well, I am glad to say, yes, it is currently accessible. It's in public preview. Uh, you need to turn it on, and then you can suddenly get all of your data. You don't need to turn it on for it to start capturing your data. It's already doing that. You just need to enable your ability to query it, and then you can query things such as how much is Databricks costing you? What kind of clusters are turned on? Who's accessing which notebooks? Which tables are the most popular that you get queried? Loads and loads and loads of really, really useful information bundled up with some sample dashboards that actually show you some nice high-level stats. So that is what we're going to do today. We're going to have a look at Lake House Observability, which is actually enabled by a feature called System Tables. So Databricks System Tables are a new feature in Unity Catalog that lets you do lots and lots and lots of things. That's, that's the plan. As always, if you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what kind of things you want to know. What video should I do next? I have so many to do from the recent Data AI Summit. Yeah, lots, just, just lots going on. Right, let's go and have a look at what I'm talking about. So there's this whole blog post. We had this whole announcement saying, yes, there's lots of things we spoke about, lots of things we heard about at the Data AI Summit. So loads of these features we're going to have a look at soon. Federation, we definitely need to have a look at. Uh, all the feature store, being able to add models into Unity is a big one. Volumes is huge, just having arbitrary files rather than tables. But this is the one that we're after. This observability, so system tables and dashboards of all aspects of the lake house. This is the bad boy that actually made lots and lots of nerdy governance people's eyes light up. Just a general ability to get some dashboards about how, how am I using Unity Catalog? How much am I spending? What do my clusters look like? What does my DBU forecast for the next three months look like? So much useful information in there that we can dig into. So I want that. How, how, do, how do we make that work? Well, the easiest way is to kind of install a demo. Now, we, we did a video on this recently. We had this thing called DB Demos. So DB Demos to AI. It's built by the internal Databricks guys. Uh, Quentin is a legend and put together so many of these demos. Uh, and there's a new demo explicitly for system tables. And that's what we want to have a play with. Let's go down here. We've got system tables with billing forecasts to do the forecasting for you, usage and audit. So if we install this, so just dive into a notebook, do pip install DB demos, install our UC04 system tables. That's kind of a little hint to get us started. Now, currently with the preview, I... 100% recommend going this way. Because to actually get started with system tables, you need to enable it in Unity Catalog. The way to enable it in Unity Catalog is to call the API for a couple of different schemas to enable certain tables. And that's just a pain to do it once as a script. I wouldn't recommend spending time developing that script, getting it working, or you can just install this demo, grab the script in there, enable it once, and then it's just turned on. So that's what I've done. So I've jumped into one of my workspaces, I've spun up a basic cluster, and I've installed this DB demos. And that does a few things, and we'll step through what that actually does. So, first things first, this is what it's all about. Uh, it's this new idea of system tables. I'll drop a link to this doc as well as the DB demos down in the comments below or down in the description. Uh, and it tells you what we are. So we're going to see these three things added. We're going to get some audit logs, essentially who's accessed what and what do they do. Someone's access to tables, someone's run a notebook, all that kind of really, really useful fine grain logging stuff. Uh, billable stuff. When, when do we have cluster turned on? What size cluster? What type of cluster? What runtime? How long was it turned on for? How many nodes? All of the information you need, then put it into a pricing table and calculate cost. And lineage. So anything scraped from UC in terms of these, this guy column went into there, which went into there, which went into there. Having a queryable table of that, again, just super useful. So as it says, there's uh, some API calls we need to make. We can turn it on that way. Again, I'll go through how you do it. Um, again, they've got some nice code. They can just run that code and it'll actually work. But again, we'll take a sample notebook and go and do that. And then after that, 
Where's the data? Well, currently the data is held on the data rig side. It's held basically inside Unity Catalog, and you're exposing that data and then bringing it over. As they say, during the preview, Databricks retains all of the data for you. Now, will that change your future? Maybe. Uh, are they going to change where they keep it? Are you going to have it on your side, same as you see the information schema? I don't know, honestly. Uh, but just be aware, it's very much preview at the moment. I advise having a play, take a look, get some insight into your data, but just they reserve the right to change it because it's a preview service, and it makes sense. Right, with enough caveats, we can go and have a look at what I actually did. So, dove in here, I installed DB demos, and then I said, can I get this demo installed for UC04 system tables? Now, this does a few things. Be aware this will cost you money. What this does is it spins up a, um, a SQL endpoint. And it's, I think it's a small SQL endpoint it spins up. It also spins up an interactive cluster to run some stuff. It also kicks off a Delta Live table to go and run some other stuff on a job cluster. So it's going to use a bit of compute in all the stuff it's doing to go and get the data and pull it down. So just be aware. It's going to kick a few things off. And these things are all set with Auto Terminate. It's not going to cost you thousands forever. But it'll cost you a few dollars, a few pounds, while this stuff is still up, while it's running to actually bring this data in. Be warned. So this kicked off and ran. Now, for me, this actually errored, and I'll go through why it errored in a second, but it kicks off a whole bunch of different notebooks that are pulling and polling and creating some curated data for us. Essentially, it's like an end-to-end -end data pipeline of go and get the telemetry and then do some analytics on it, do some forecasting for my billing, save down the forecasted data, present it to me, brings in a load of queries that are doing some analytics on it, and it builds in a dashboard. So there's a ton of stuff in here from the actual automation job, the workflows, the notebooks, the SQL queries, the dash, uh, dashboards, there's like a whole package. Uh, although if you ever try to do telemetry things like uh, DB Labs over uh, Overwatch, it's a lot simpler than that because it's just all baked into Databricks. So there are definitely benefits of going down this route. So yeah, when I, when I started, I mean, as it says, you should start with uh, the first notebook. And I dove, I dove into that, having, having a look at what happening and it's a nice good guide tells you exactly what to do now the stumbling block for me is running this enable system tables now when i first just let db demos do its thing and it ran end to end and it threw an error going well it's not enabled you don't have system tables it's not working so i actually had to jump out of what was trying to run automatically come into this enable system tables notebook run this manually now this is just calling the unity catalog api to say yes Enable those system tables, please. We would like to see those system tables. So, again, kind of went and got my current Metastore ID based on the workspace I'm in. Then went and actually just made a list of which um, which things I should be updating. You can see it made operational data, access, and billing um, schemas. All of all were available, but were not, were not enabled. And then it ran through and enabled those three schemas. So you can follow really easily through what this notebook's doing, but I have to run this before anything else would work. Once this is run, things are good, and I suddenly have access to a load of operational data. It then runs through and actually sort of saves them, actually means we can use it. So if I now dive into my data explorer, again, this is a Unity catalog enabled workspace. I've got my system folder, and I've got some extra things in it. Normally you wouldn't really see anything in system. You see system, but it doesn't have anything in. Now I've got access and I can go and see, have a look at audits, column lineages, table lineages. I've got my billing usage I can go and query. And I've got some operational data about who's been accessing what, who's been doing things. So I've suddenly got these tables all have been created by running that initialization job. So I ran the enable schema. I then went and re-ran everything it was trying to do in this job, which is going through and running, oop, not that one, the original one, stepping through here and doing the intro system tables, running everything in there, went and initialized things fully. So loads and loads of things it's, it's doing in there. So we can go say, well, what, who's actually billing things? So I can see my accounts, I can see my workspaces, I can see the type of compute, I'm using premium all purpose. Uh, I can see the start time, I can see some tags, where is it created? Okay, this is actually all created through some Terraform stuff we're doing. I can go and see some cluster IDs, the cluster no longer exists, that's fine. Loads of stuff that was going on I can go and actually query in terms of my usage. I can see who's accessed which data, which point didn't work. 
I can go and dig into lots of different pieces. If we dive on the other side over to some of these people queries, I should be able to go and see a lot of queries in here. There we go. So there's lots of system tables, things that have been created on my behalf. So I can go and dig in and say, what's what's going on there? Like how much are people consuming from my billing? Loads and loads of things just automatically set up as a part of this, which is pretty cool. Let me go and start that endpoint. So I'll dip back here in a second. So yeah, other bits and pieces that got enabled as, as, as part of that. Um, so if we dive into the audit logs, it's super interesting. So again, giving us lots of information, loads of good stuff happening in here. Main thing is you can go and say, well, who's been accessing my data? I've got my workspaces. I can go and see, well, who was it? What was the IP address? How did they access things? What was their username? And what did they do? So people have changed rules, logging in, changing workspaces, listing tables, all actions that people are taking inside of Databricks. I'm getting an amazing, great log of what's actually going on there. I can go and query who they are. I can go and see if they had error messages. I can go and get information about who is using Databricks and what are they doing. I can get information about what, what are the different types of things they're doing. I can uh, do it down. And they say, yeah, what, what, are the, what are the main things people are doing? Oh, okay, most people are doing these things. I had this little query to say, of all the people in the company, what tables are they accessing? Because we can see as part of that, if it's a um, Unity catalog access, it's saying, well, this person's accessed that table. This person's accessed that table. You might kick off several of these access events as part of a single query. So I can see the thing that's happening the most is I'm going into just under a demo table. I show people how Unity Catalog works. I can see that Farlux come in and he's having a look at how masking works. I can see Gareth came in and had a look at the information schema. I can go and have a look at that log to see what people are doing on my whole Databricks workspace, which is super, super interesting. That query didn't work because I was playing around with some stuff. So just your ability to start querying this stuff is very, very, very useful. There's loads and loads of things you can do just by running that initial enable, running the initial bring in kind of system script and going through these notebooks, starts gathering and exposing incredibly useful data. If we switch over to the editor side, how is my thing doing? It's still could have been on serverless workspace, not in UK South yet. Ah. Um, while that's rerunning, we can dip it over to the dashboard side. And there's a dashboard that's automatically put together, which uh, is still static. There we go. So we can come and have a look at some of the information that's going on there. We can see consumption. Now, how's my consumption been working over time? You can see it's been growing and growing and growing as we do more stuff. We can see how much I spent last month on DBUs, how much I'm forecasting to spend in the next quarter. I can go and get some real useful information. I can see based on my fairly, fairly spiky thing, it's then put together a forecast for how that's going to happen over the next 12 months. Got to get a real idea, or six months, I've got a real idea about what's actually, what my trends and usage patterns are going to be. I can dig in and see what's actually happening. How am I spending money? Oh God, I'm using loads of all-purpose compute. That's an optimization that I could be doing. So I can come into this and look with a bit of a optimization lens on and say across my entire Databricks estate, every Databricks workspace in my account, what kind of things am I doing? Oh, okay, that works based. Oh, actually, we can go and spend some time with that team, optimize how they're using Databricks, and save a load of money. So many things we can do just because we've got this data. We're going to have a look at based on what's actually going on in my catalog. So now a lot of this is kind of toy data that we use just to demonstrate things. Loads of it are managed tables. Now we can decide if we want managed tables. We prefer that they're all actually just external tables to give us separation between Databricks and the year, the storage or because there's a lot of stuff coming down the line in terms of optimization and management of tables, maybe we want things to be managed. There's a whole question about what the best way forward is going to be. So you've got a lot of delta sharing tables that are knocking around, which is probably why so many are managed. Just getting an idea of what is in your estate. And just, again, just to play around with this stuff, it's just a pre-built workspace, pre-built um, like dashboards and queries. Just run that DB demos and it gets you all of this stuff set up. So I was saying, rather than starting from scratch and just going through the docs and saying, right, enable the schemas and then just start writing queries and figuring out where things are, install this demo, have a look at how things fit together, and there's just a load of really useful data in here. Now, the thing to know is this is not a live connection back to your um, data. So essentially, you have this training date checker at the button at the top. How long ago did this run? This was run 0 days ago. This was run today. Okay, that's fine. So 
essentially there is a workflow that's set up by default. You get this billing forecast to go and kind of rerun your forecasting. And that's the thing that you need to schedule if you want that to be generally up to date. So you need to say, well, actually, I've just ran this once as a one-off. You need to run it regularly uh, if you want to have that up-to-date dashboard. So the only thing you really need to do, install DB demos and then schedule this job and say, actually, I would like this to be updated weekly. It doesn't need to be updated every second. It's just generally performance stats. So you can just have a general touch point to say how fast are things, are things working properly, what's actually going on. So loads and loads of things in there. Uh, there's lots of caveats in there. You can see looks of the pricing is just the off the shelf pricing. It's not going to have any discounts in there. That's going to change in the future by the sound of it. There's lots and lots of things, loads of detail in those notebooks. I would say just go and read through the notebooks once you've installed the demo, and that'll give you an idea of some of those caveats and how things are working. But absolutely, I know a lot of clients of ours would be absolutely ecstatic the fact that they can get this data just by pressing a few buttons if you've got Unity Catalog installed. You're not using Unity Cat, you can't do any of this stuff. System tables are enabled by Unity Catalog. We've been saying that again, the video I did setting up Unity Catalog earlier this week. It's just again, another driver saying, you can't really avoid it. If you're using Databricks, you probably want to be, well not, you definitely want to have Unity Catalog turned on and then there's loads of extra benefits you're going to be seeing. So absolutely, Definitely 100% recommend get involved with the system tables. Uh, there we go. So we can see that's now running. We can go and have some queries. We can go and have a look at everything that's going on. If we go and create a new query, there we go. We had some things just doing a little bit of querying about who's been accessing which different uh, tables. Okay, we can just go and have a look at what's going on in some of these different things. So we have a look at access. We can just do a select star from our access table, or audit tables now. Again, you can just explore this stuff. So there are gonna be queries that you're gonna build that aren't, don't come out of the box as part of this default. There's gonna be things that you're interested in, certain things happening, maybe when things have accessed by a, they've used a certain filter, it took over a certain amount of time. Where are my spikiest queries that took a long time to happen? Um, users coming from a certain area in a certain place, I can filter it based on when it's just my own things things that have an error message, just lots and lots of different kind of queries. And the other nice thing you can do, because this is baked into the Databricks SQL side of things, we can set alerts up. So if there's certain audit access events you didn't want to happen, you want to know if that has happened, well, you can just refresh this data, put an alert on it, and then get an email sent through saying, oh, we've had 10 access requests within a, the, 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 the last day, or we've had a hotspot spike on a certain table, where queries took on on average longer than this time. All those kind of, oh, I'd love it if it would just tell me when something happened. Because we've got this audit table and because we've got the billing table, we can stitch those together and build so much like governance automation. Tell me when something happens, we can build into this. I'll get an email or I'll kick off a workflow. I'll put a message into Teams or Slack. And then I'll go, oh, okay, I'll log on. I'll have a look at the dashboard. I'll then do some digging to what actually happened. We can now do that if you've enabled system tables. There's so much we can do because of it. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's convincing you to go and do this. Import DB demos, install UCO4 system tables, try system tables out. Documentation, there's a bit of documentation, it's all right. Actually following the, through these notebooks is gonna teach you really, really well how everything works and how it hangs together. And yeah, that's, that's all I really wanted to go through. If you want to automate the workflow and the monitoring and the telemetry of what's happening in your Databricks workspaces, enable system tables, write some queries, put some alerts on it, and it is so powerful. So yeah, I'll put the link down below. Take a look, go and have a dig into it. Again, once again, props to Quentin for another insane demo. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.